I'll see how it goes. I can, I can ask people. Okay. 어, 안녕하세요. 저는 영국 유학닷컴의 장지성이고요. 오늘 이렇게 어, 3일절 100주년을 맞이해서 의미 있는 날인데도 불구하고 저희가 준비한 세미나에 참석해 주셔서 너무 감사합니다. 오늘은 사실 좀 특별한 분을 모셨어요. 저희가 매년 이렇게 코벤트리 대학교의 교수님들과 함께 세미나를 진행을 했는데 오늘은 저희가 진행 그동안 모셨던 분 중에 가장 어, 높은 포지션에 계신 분이 직접 와주셨고요. 어, 지금 저희가 세미나 이번 신청을 받으면서 느꼈던 것이 가면 갈수록 스포츠 매니지먼트, 스포츠 관련된 전공을 희망하시는 분들이 기하급수적으로 늘어나고 있다는 걸 느꼈고 그만큼 인기가 있고 어, 전도 유망하고 앞으로 사회에 나와서 어떤 일을 하실 때 도움이 될수 있는 좋은 전공이라고 생각을 하니까 오늘 어, 우리 마크 교수님이 준비한 프리젠테이션 잘 보시고 되도록이면 많은 정보를 얻어 가셨으면 좋겠고요. 그리고 아마 프리젠테이션은 한 20분, 30분 정도에 마감을 할 거고요. 그 다음에 필요한 것들을 저희가 다시 여쭤보고 어, Q&A하고 그 다음에 일대 상담도 좀 해드리고 이렇게 해서 오늘 시간을 마무리하도록 하겠습니다. 그리고 어, 궁금한 거 혹시 학사 내가 학사, 그러니까 대학교 들어가겠다. 학사하겠다. 석사 스포츠 경영, 스포츠 매니지먼트 또 이벤트 매니지먼트 또, 어, 또 뭐가 있을까? 스포츠 사이언스! 제가 짚지, 짚지 않은 정보는 나중에 말씀해 주십시오. So I have sport, sp, sport management, events management, sport science, yeah. one for science. I, mean, I wasn't anticipating sport science, but what I might be able to do at the end is go, uh, come, um, come back to that. And what was the other course? Was there any others? So sport management, events, science, what were the other courses? Event. Uh, events. So the, no other courses, it's just those three courses. Well, hello. Well, uh, th thank you for sort of giving me the invitation to come to talk to you today. My name is Dr. Mark Pierre Cash. I'm the Associate Head of School for marketing and management. Um, my background is actually in sports management. Um, it's one of the areas that I've written about, uh, it's the area that I've taught on. Um, and if you do, if you are interested in the sport management, then there's a couple of, um, there's, there's a couple of textbooks which you might be able to utilize to, to have a look. So what I'll do, um, I'll, try and sort of explain about the sport and event courses. Uh, I will say a little bit about sort of Coventry and the idea and the philosophy of how we have designed our courses. Uh, as I said, sports science is a little bit different, but uh, I can talk to you sort of uh, at, at the end. Um, so, my four themes, well, one of the things which I do want you to be happy about is, you know, is it the right sort of course? You know, are you choosing the right course? That's really important. So it's, it's an ideal opportunity to actually talk to me today because over the years, sometimes I might have had students who, uh, they might be doing sport management and when you talk to them, you're thinking, oh, you know what? It might be more sports science. Or vice versa, I've had students who, when they're talking, they've sometimes focused on sports science. And, th and as you talk to them, you say, what you actually need is this type of course. So don't be afraid to ask questions, because it, it's so important that you choose the right course, the right university. It's a big investment. And from our point of view, you know, we, we don't want sort of you to make sort of the wrong uh, decision. So we want to sort of hopefully you'll feel happy and confident that if you are, uh, do come to us, that it's the right choice. First and foremost, though, that, that I want to make sure sort of the, sort of that you are uh, happy. Because it makes our job easier. <laughs> we want happy students. We want students who are happy to learn. Because uh, that way we get sort of a really good teaching environment. And I'll, I'll, focus, on, I'll focus on four themes. I'll explain a little bit about what is sport management and events management. 
I'll say a little bit about teaching and learning, international opportunities and employability. Because the key reason why you want to do a degree is to ultimately to help you get a better job. Am I wrong? Give me a nod or a shake. When you finish university, you want to get a terrible job. That's a test. When you finish university, you want to get... <laughs> when you finish university, do you want to get a good job? That's a bit better. See, you're my audience. You're my audience. You've got to re interact with me. It makes me feel uh, happy. So just periodically, if you just, just nod... Just <laughs> disagree with me, perhaps, and then it sort of I can check if we're on the on, on the right lines. Uh, I won't worry too much about uh, Slido at the moment. Uh, this is one of our students. We uh, on our sport management programmes, we have about um, thirty six students now, um, and on our postgraduate programmes, we have four Korean uh, students. So over the years, we've seen sort of a notable increase with the number of Korean students. This is one of our third year students. And before I came away, I sort of sat down with uh, some of them and I asked them a few questions. For example, oops. for example, why did you want to do sport, uh, sport course at Coventry? And it's always quite interesting what they're actually saying. So, um, saying I have a passion for sport and a desire to work in the dynamic industry. This course creates many opportunities to gain practical experiences. So there's that term there, practical experiences. It's one of the themes I want to sort of talk about today. And, uh, <coughs> and develop my industry networks, which will be invaluable as I develop my career. Oops. Uh, so that idea of experiences, so quite a lot of our students saying, look, Yes, I want to gain an academic qualification. But to get a job, what you also need to do is to get work experience. And it might seem a little bit strange that you're going to university to do an academic course, so how can you build work experience? Well, it's one of the things that we're sort of acutely aware of, and we've made a, a lot of effort to try and create opportunities to gain work experience. The good thing about sports and events is that there are numerous opportunities for volunteering. Um, so if you have a look at uh, the opportunities that were taken here. Birmingham City. How many of you like football? Still got a couple. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when, when my children were little, I used to put them on knees so they wouldn't run away. You know? <laughs> so I, I have to stay here then. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So if I go too far, you'll get them no, back, no, 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 right? No, no, no. Like on the dog leaf. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so yeah, if you like football, uh, how many of you are Birmingham City? Well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> A blues fan. <laughs> you? Uh, I, I mean, uh, Birmingham is about 20 minutes. It's the second biggest uh, city. Uh, but it's quite interesting that they wanted to work with Birmingham City, just doing some part-time work, uh, doing a variety of jobs, but just to get the experience. Uh, and, and it was fun, but it's also worked as an event promoter and getting experience on events such as Coventry Marathon. One of the other students... Um, it was quite interesting. He, he was a sports student, but they also wanted to work on, uh, do some volunteering for the Rolling Stones, because we got the Rico Arena nearby. So he just wanted to do, he didn't get paid, but he was just doing the stewarding and got to watch the Stones, <laughs> the Rolling Stones, yeah. free. So that's one of the things to think about. Um, and at Coventry, there'll be lots of opportunities to do that. And um, what do I like about Coventry? Well, um, like the lectures, the seminars, I say a little bit about the teaching, um, and the annual field trips and guest lectures. And I'll say a little bit about that. We really love learning about real sports businesses. We do make uh, an effort to try and sort of bring in practitioners, yeah. people who have worked in the industry. So the, I, I thought I'd start with some of the 
quotes from um, one of our third year students. Those are some of the pictures. That's when they were at West Ham. So that's what they're spelling there. W H U. That was from an Olympic Park visit. Because West Ham played it where the 2012 Olympics uh, were. So that was one of the little field trips that we, uh, we did. Okay, uh, sport man, I was going to do this on the slide uh, question, but I, 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 won't, I won't worry too much. Uh, <coughs> I won't worry too much about it. As it's a small audience, I'll ask you. So someone has to volunteer to tell me what they think sport is, or anything that comes to mind. I might have to pick on people. Well, what I'm actually doing is, I'm preparing you for university life. <laughs> so this is what it might be. This might be a seminar, I might be there, then I might ask you a question. So, what comes to mind when you think of sport? Sports are what to do. What comes to mind? Anything. So one word. One word. You, you said you like. So what comes to mind for sport for you? Putting you on the spot there. One word. Anything. Coming to university. That's too easy. You like football? Yeah. Football. Good answer. There you go. See. <laughs> What do, you, what do you like? A particular team? Uh, I love Liverpool. Liverpool. Oh, I, I quite like. It's not. It's not my team. Swindon Town is my t team. Swindon. You've all heard of Swindon Town. No. Sorry. <laughs> you don't know Swindon Town. We're in what would be. We're in like the fourth division. So you got the Premiership first, and we're in the fourth division. So a small town. That's my team, though. The team I was brought, uh, brought up uh, with, but Liverpool. So you, what you can say is football, Premiership. That's what sport means to you. Is it one of the reasons why you want to do sports? Because you're interested in football. Uh, I really like to play football. So I was thinking about how to be a football player, but I was too late to be a football player. So. I won't work about with football. Yeah. So I search about sports management. So, uh, so I noticed there is my job. So that's a, that's a that's a good it's a good reason it's a good rationale. You know, a lot of us want to do or do a degree because we enjoy the activity, and if you enjoy watching and if you enjoy playing football, you may not be able to get to the elite level, but that doesn't mean you can't have some involvement uh, with it. And doing <coughs> a management degree is no bad thing. So it's one of the things we will encourage you to do is though, especially at Coventry, is don't just, don't just go to football games. At Coventry, I would strongly encourage any of you to do go to events and sports that you are not familiar with. Ice hockey, rugby. How many of you? How many of you have watched a rugby game? Rugby. Where's the next? Here's a, here's a here's a question. Where's the next rugby World Cup being played? There's, there's a million dollars if you can answer this question. <laughs> Des, Des has got a big budget for this. <laughs> <laughs> a million dollars. Here's a question now. You're sweating. Where's the next Rugby World Cup being played? No. Do you know? No. Anyone know the answer? It's not far from here, right? It's not. This is in this part of the world. Rugby World Cup. Next year. Australia? Closer. Closer. New Zealand? Singapore? Asia, Singapore, it's Japan. Rugby World Cup. It's that word term. World. World. And rugby traditionally is tended to have a smaller number of countries who have played, played it. So if you're in the UK now at the moment, 
we've got what's called the Six Nations. It's the real big tournament. Every year, the Six Nations... How, how many of you can name the nations of Britain? Is another question. So we've got England. Call out another one. This is testing your geography now. <laughs> another nation of Britain. Wales. Wales. Yeah, they beat England at rugby last weekend. Scotland and Ireland. And the, the other two countries that make up the six nations for the rugby is France and Italy. But it, but it is, you know, and Australia, New Zealand, they have tended to dominate uh, rugby, Argentina. But they want this idea of the World Cup. And they're trying to grow rugby in Asia because the more people that see and watch rugby, the more they can sell the TV rights for sponsorship. The more valuable it becomes. That's why you know the World Cup, the football World Cup, is worth so much because billions watch it. Billions. It's worth an awful lot. So it it says encouraging you to think sort of um, a little bit differently uh, and think beyond just uh, football. There are so many sports that you can uh, work at. But <clears throat> it's quite interesting. This is a sort of. De uh, this definition, sport means all forms of physical activity which through casual organised participation aim at improving physical fitness, mental well-being and forming social relationships that result in uh, competition at all levels. And that's quite interesting. Now all of you will think, oh, sport is good for you physically, but that can be challenged in some ways. But how many of you actually think about, when we measure health, we measure it physically, hearts, we measure it mentally, you know, how, if you think how good it is, how nice it is for a sporting moment when your team scores. Ah, ah, brilliant. You know, England did well in the World Cup this year, a very rare. England won a penalty shootout. You don't understand the, the pain. I've watched England lose penalty shootouts since 1992, <laughs> usually against Germany. You know how painful a penalty shootout is? It's painful. But we won our first one. It was a great feeling. I was with my daughter. But her first World Cup, she believes that England always win penalty shootouts. <laughs> she, she doesn't know. She hasn't had years of pain to experience. But... It's this idea of this social, uh, this mental, you know, the how good it is to get that stimulation. And health is this, being together with people, being together with friends and family. That is a measure of health, because when you are isolated, it's not good for your health. And sport is very good for bringing together uh, people socially. Uh, there's a question I sometimes ask, aren't these sports actually sports? But uh, I won't worry too much about that. So when we look at undergraduate courses, you know, we've got our sport courses, but we've got so many different uh, areas from manufacturing uh, goods. We've got the areas of uh, marketing. We've got sports events, sport facility management. So we've got gyms, uh, we've got sponsorship, we've got multi-use facilities. And then for the... Uh, Events, we've got festivals, conferences, weddings, social events, multi-use facilities. You know, we're, we're surrounded by all of these things. The hotel where we've uh, come from, it's got a gym which needs to be managed. It needs people to design it. It needs people to purchase the equipment. It needs people who design fitness equipment. So we've got all those jobs, just one gym. We've got all those jobs being supported by it. We've got the people who sell the machinery. So we've got all, all of those uh, different uh, uh, elements. We've got the hotel with its conference facilities. Uh, so we've got all these sort of, uh, it's, it's huge area. And obviously one of the things to appreciate is that sport and events will overlap. So that's why we, we tell students, we tell students to, uh, to think about, um, to think about sort of the different venues that they might go to. So the Rico Arena near Coventry, 
where, it's, uh, where the Rolling Stones played, but it's also where the main rugby team played, uh, uh, Wasps. It's a premiership rugby team. They play at the Rico Arena. They also, the big sport at the moment is netball. Uh, women's sport is a huge area. That, that's where a lot of the growth is taking place. If you want to get into sort of uh, new markets, look at all the areas of women's sports. You know, say like men's soccer, men's football. That, that's what we call a sort of saturation point. But women's football, you know, in the UK, we've got half the population. Half the population who, quite a few years, you know, a few years ago, was being excluded from sports. But it's different now. Different now. So women's sport, it's a real area, and it's going to grow and grow. And go for, obviously, we've got women's football. So we've got, where's the next Women's World Cup? Play all these questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I asked you all these. You wanted to come here and have a nice, quiet sit down, <laughs> listen to someone, and now I've asked you another question. Where's the Women's World Cup? England? No. Close. <coughs> no. France. France. Yeah. France. Yeah. France. A million pounds. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, you get the checkbook <laughs> out. So yeah, the first yeah. one. Can, can I have your credit card? <laughs> <laughs> we should play it actually. Like, who wants to be with me now? Do you have who wants to be with me now? The quiz game? No, you don't have that. It, it was, it's just one of those questions where you have to answer questions. Every time you get a question right, you go up until you ultimately you answer the final question. Four million pounds or dollars or whatever. Uh, the film Slumdog Millionaire had a variation of that. Um, yeah, so Women's World Cup in France. Uh, huge opportunities. And women, uh, women are actually getting the sponsorship contracts now. They, they, if you wanted to be an agent, a sport agent, the top flight of the men's game, incredibly competitive. But look at the women's and the women's game, how it's being professionalised. So that, that's an area, just to think, think differently. And that's what you want to do when you do the degree course. It's not about just going for, I, do, I dislike football, I only want to study football. You've, we try and encourage you to think uh, differently. Well, sorry, what do you think about the esports? Uh, of the esports, it's one of the questions we sometimes ask is, are esports sports? Would you classify them as part of the sport industry? There's another question. Yes or no? Simple answer. Esports, would you class them as part of the sport industry? This is, it, this is kind of a, it's a philosophical question because if you're doing a degree, you might throw out a question like that. And um, what you need to do is to try and explore how can esports be considered as a sport and why they're not considered as a sport. So, what's your opinion? Esports as a sport, yes or no? So, yes, no. Yes. Yes. Sport? Yeah. Esports? No. <sighs> See, that's what. We've got, we've got a conflict now. We've got a dialogue. So, what we might have to say is, you have to defend, explain why esports are considered as a sport. Because they've got the word sport in it, doesn't mean. I, I mean, I was at the airport, Frankfurt Airport, and I noticed the chocolate, the German chocolate, it's called sport, isn't it? <laughs> Is it sport? <laughs> Does eating chocolate good for you? Does it make you particularly. No. Because it's got the word sport, doesn't, doesn't mean that it's sport. So we've got an interesting difference. Can because. You <laughs> uh, because we've got the, uh, you know, people might say, looking at the earlier definition, if you're just playing, you know, on the controls, thinking, well, that's not physically getting active enough. It's not necessarily always good for you. We know the arguments of some of the health problems of playing, you know, sitting down, watching too much screen time, computer games. But then it's interesting how the Premiership, Barcelona, all these teams are sponsoring esports. And it's also quite interesting how the top people who play esports, they don't just sit there all day 
you know, drinking their fizzy drinks, Coca-Cola, eating their bags of potato chips. It's quite interesting, the top players are approaching it like being an athlete, where they actually train. It's a bit like motor racing. Motor racing, oh, you're just sitting down driving. <laughs> but motor racing drivers have to be incredibly fit, incredibly fit. They're not, in fact, just sitting down, but, you know, it takes... To be the best, you have to do more, uh, do more of these uh, things. So there's a question. I, I throw that out as esports, and I know esports is certainly very big in terms of the events sector in Korea. So that could be one of the areas to uh, explore. <coughs> in, in terms of this, is kind of um, just to give you an idea of the module. So one of the things to appreciate: the sports programs and the events programs. They are business management programs. Because they are business management programs, when you look at business, business is underpinned by three key areas. Money, so that's your finance modules. You know finance and accounts? It's then underpinned by customers. That's your marketing-related modules. Thirdly, it's underpinned by people. Your human relations. You have to manage, team, all of you will have to manage other people. You have to work with other people, sometimes you have to manage other people. So think of those three areas. All business degrees will have an element of finance and accounts, they'll have an element of human resource management, and an element of marketing. Now, if you've got those three areas in mind, when you look at business degrees, uh, you've got variations in the mix. So, for example, in our school, you could just do a marketing course or an advertising marketing course. Um, but what we do with sports and events is that we focus those business-related subjects to the specific subject area of sports and events. And you'll see that uh, here. So, in, in sports, we've got introduction to the sport industry. Uh, oh, so, those are the manageable ones. So, you see... Sport and event business environment, so that's your marketing related modules. Management and leadership, that's your human resource uh, related modules. There's another human resource. Um, so we've got these uh, different areas, so strategic management. So just, just some examples uh, there. <coughs> and then we've got the sport specific modules, sport policy and governance, sport PR, so PR public relations. Uh, final year we've got sport event legacy. I was just chatting with a, 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 um, a student who's going to be coming to our postgraduate course next year. That was this morning. It was quite interesting. I was chatting to, talking to him about the uh, Olympics, Winter Olympics. You had the Winter Olympics. Yeah, yeah. So, so I asked that question. Where were the last Winter Olympics held? Hong Kong, Korea. <laughs> there you go. You should get that one right. Uh, so, and he, uh, it was interesting that he said a lot of the facilities weren't being fully utilised. What a familiar story. Olympics take place, they build all these fabulous facilities. The party goes away, people have a great time finishes, and then they're underutilised. I can give you a long list of that. And he was saying that that was some of the problems, that you've got these facilities, and they're not being uh, fully uh, utilised. And that's why we've got a module called Event Legacy. Because we want to attract all these huge events, but we've got to have the benefits. Sport will not automatically bring benefits. It will not do that. There's a... We call it a virtuous rhetoric. So many people say, sport is lovely. Sport improves your health. Sport brings money to economies. Yes, it can do those things, but also, if it's not managed properly, in that term, management, if it's not managed properly, it will do none of those things. I saw someone in the gym um, this morning. You think going to the gym makes you healthier. But it was quite interesting. I noticed that they weren't using one of the machines properly. And you know, I was actually there thinking, you're potentially going to injure yourself. You're not going to get healthier. You are going to injure yourself. 
And that's quite important. The same goes for, so if you don't tell people or help people, then those all benefits will not automatically occur. And the same goes for sports. Because you have a big sports event, it does not automatically mean that money will be generated, that jobs will be created in the local economy, only if you manage it. For example, I've seen one of, uh, a new arena uh, was built in England, near where, where I used to work. Um, where it was a stadium, rather. A stadium for uh, Worcester, for a rugby team. And one of the I would say, oh, it's going to create loads of jobs. We have this stadium, people come from all over the country, so they play a rugby game, they watch a rugby game, you know, 30,000 people watch it, it's going to create jobs. But you know, one of the reasons why it wasn't going to um, create that many jobs is people would drive off the road, off the motorway, into the stadium, not literally into the stadium, that would interfere with play. I'm testing you again. Drive into, no, in a car park near the stadium, watch the game, get back in the cars, then go back home. Now there was nowhere for them to spend their money on. The money is in their wallets, they watch the game, and it stayed in their wallets. If you watch some stadiums, and if you go to Wembley now, uh, you will, if you go to the Wembley, uh, where a lot of sports events take place, there are coffee bars, pubs, restaurants. People come out and think, oh, this is a nice place, let's go for a meal. Let's go shopping. The money is leaving my wallet, staying in the local economy, and creating jobs. So that's why you have to think about these things. So there, this is just examples of uh, modules. And our modules are bespoke to events and sports. So some business, uh, some sport management courses, you might just do a general finance module or HR module. But we actually design our modules um, specifically to the sport industry. And in terms of assessments, we've got a variety of assessments. I won't say too much about it, but in terms of assessments, you will have to do reports. You will have to do presentations, right? I'm doing now. Using, misusing clickers. I'm not using it very well. <laughs> Group work, um, live projects, case studies, sometimes you do posters. So the point is, there's variety. Let's go retro tech. Old tech, old technology, this. It's a finger and I can point. <laughs> right, which is better? Finger, technology. What's your, what's your answer? Which do you prefer? New technology or finger? You like, oh. <laughs> I'm old school, I quite like the fingers. Ah, look, for you, I will use technology. <laughs> there you go. So we've got variety. It almost looks a bit like James Bond. You know, the beginning of James Bond, I was expecting to come out. <laughs> that was a good noise. That's not bad, actually. Good impression. Do you want to do the silhouette? <laughs> <laughs> so we've got learning in terms of uh, how we teach you, uh, gamification, specialist um, uh, real-world experience, uh, learning, lots of learning by doing. So lots of practical activities. And uh, in terms of teaching, we've got lectures, seminars, field trips, uh, uh, using computer simulators. So there's, there's variety. That's the point. So you might say, oh, I don't like exams. Well, you might only have a couple of exams over the few years. You know, so you should be able to sort of uh, work to your best uh, skills and work to what you're uh, happiest uh, with. So that's the variety. Rooted in practical problems. You know, right at the beginning, one of the things that the student said, he liked the practical basis, he liked the practical work. Um, this is one of the things that we do, and this is one of the things that the students said he quite liked. So what we have is lots of field trips. Um, we have sort of people um, who come in, 
lot of ex alumni. So we've got uh, Urquhart. So we've got he he's, he came in to talk to us how to be a football agent. Uh, I was actually telling one of the students earlier to have a look at his book. He actually manages uh, Ozil. Ozil plays for Arsenal. Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Myself, Ozil. Yeah. So he manages uh, him really good. So you can make a note, have a look. If you want to be interested in becoming a sport agent, definitely look at his work. Adam Howe was one of our uh, uh, ex-students. Did some placement work at Everton, and now he's the marketing manager at so Everton Football Team. Uh, Cricket World Cup. Cricket is not a sport you, that you necessarily uh, think about, but it's going to be happen happening in England next year. I won't ask you that question. <laughs> So 2019 Cricket World Cup, okay, um, we've got the ice hockey, and we might have a video, uh, just want to click on, I don't know if it works, if you click on this, so this is our guest lecture week, so we're, we're just, I, I can go there now, can, can you see, I'm, yeah, I'm you tired. Can't. <laughs> you can't. You have got to keep you entertained. Is it working? Well, you need to log in. Well, let's not worry about it. Let's... Okay. Uh, it, it was an embedded video for um, our guest lecture week. But it was when we said, use the term real world problems. So rather than just talk to you about this is marketing theory, we bring in practitioners, people who work in the industry, and say, these are the sorts of problems I have. You know, how do I market uh, to these people? Or well, one of the things Adam was talking about was uh, not the elite, you know, the big play, uh, wasn't focusing on sort of marketing the big games, you know, when Everton play Chelsea or Arsenal. What they were interested in is uh, Everton, they have to do, go out into the communities and get young people. You know, children who are six, eight, because what they want them to do is become Everton fans. And if you get them when they're six or seven or eight years old, then they're a fan for life. I can't change my team now, <laughs> Swindon Town. And it's a bit, you know, this bizarre thing, and you might be loose, uh, you know, you might not have your allegiance, but if I was to tell an Arsenal fan, so you're an Arsenal fan, right, you go support uh, Tom, uh, uh, Spurs, Tom Hot Spurs, you got a Korean player? Yeah. Right. Who, who, who's the Korean player who plays for Tottenham Hotspur then? Yeah. There you go. Whee! No, I'm not sure ask for So, uh, yeah, you can ask them to change. So what they have to do, and Adam was sort of telling us about this, how do they get young people involved and their families? Because from a marketing point of view, they will be with that club, or if you want to change it, that is a brand, they will be with that brand for their lives. It's a bit like, you know, if, if Nike or Adidas could get people from a young age saying, right, you will be Adidas all your life, they would love to do that. And this is one of the interesting things about sports. Sport, you know, we tend to, we often associate sport with having fun and enjoyment. Yes, it is. And that sometimes means we don't always take it seriously. But when you look at the money involved, when you look at sort of um, what's needed to understand sport, there's a lot of good science there. So why, in terms of the psychology, why do we support a team? Why does it deserve our loyalty? How do we get sort of, uh, what is it in terms of the crowd dynamics? You know, there's a lot of, Good science. To be a good sport manager, you have to understand a lot of good. Uh, you have to understand a lot of science. Uh, these are some of the other international experiences. Uh, so we've got Kuala Lumpur going global, uh, Dubai. Uh, one of the things which um, the sports and bench students were doing was going to uh, Groningen, um, which is in uh, in Holland. And they work with other international students. So we've got students from all over the world. 
uh, coming. Now do a management game. So this is where we take Coventry University students to Groningen in Holland. Uh, students come from all over the world. You are put into a different group. You are forced to work with other, uh, other cultures, other because that's one of the things you need to do, because sport is global, and you have got a problem to uh, solve. Uh, so there's another one of our students. Um, in terms of what I was saying about uh, employment opportunities, so to make yourself employable, you need an academic qualification. What you also need is work experience. So we try to create as many opportunities for work experience as possible at Coventry. But, but, it's down to you. We're not going to come, knock on your door, say, come on, it's time for your job now. <laughs> you have to come knocking on our door saying, I saw this job, can I, can I apply for it? For this uh, volunteering op uh, opportunity. So uh, what we've got is... Uh, so, some of the work is a development officer at Table Tennis Club. Uh, worked on the Rolling uh, at Stones Conference. Uh, worked on a distant volunteering in Berlin, in Germany. So, you know, year two, certainly the second year. Now, some students won't have done anything. I'm not going to stand here and say, I will guarantee all of these things. This is a student who said, right, this is my opportunity. You know, I'm investing a lot in my degree, and I've got to make the most of it, this opportunity. I've got to try and sort of get as much work experience. So we've got uh, all sorts of uh, support mechanisms for that. We've got specialist tutors, uh, and there'll be advertisements all the time. This happened uh, just fairly recently. It's very big in the uh, UK. Sport personality of the uh, year, so just before Christmas, uh, took place at the NEC, which is a huge exhibition area uh, near Coventry. It's, it's between Coventry and Birmingham, really. Uh, so you can see the scale uh, of the event. Um, so we've got Gary Lineker, sort of uh, Claire Baldwin, uh, hosting it. And these are all our commentary students. So at very short notice, they asked for help. Now, it took place, it was on one day, Sunday. Didn't get paid for it, but what a great experience. You put that on your CV. I have worked on Sport Personality of the Year. Great. Does that sound good? I helped sort of uh, uh, help with that, that project. So think about those things. But it said, those students had to we put out the advert, say, look, we've been asked short notice, and the student we had less than a week. Uh, short of volunteers, who can help? Students came forward, got praise, and it's now sort of, now we've got more. Uh, these are more examples of places that students have uh, volunteered uh, for. So we've got, that's the Rico Arena near Coventry. You can see that's the sports area. But this is the indoor space, this is the exhibition space. So even though it was built as an arena, I think they say about over 60% of their income, 70% of their income comes from non-sport related activities. Non-sport related activities. It's why we tell sport management students that they have to think beyond sports. And why event students have to think about sports. To be a good manager, you have to be flexible. So we've got the Godiva Festival in Coventry. That's a big sort of uh, free uh, music concert festival. Again, round in the summer, put yourself forward for it. There's a bench all sports students. We've got the uh, ice rink. We've got cricket. We've got students who um, don't like cricket. Well, what a good opportunity to see something different. What's the biggest sport in India? Cricket. Have a look. Have a look at cricket in India and see how it is marketed. It's amazing. You will look at the adverts and you're thinking, I didn't realise cricket was so exciting. Well, I wonder what your image is of cricket, of five days of... <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, time for a tea. <laughs> for the tea. You know, the fact that it takes five days for the test game, five days to play a game. Can you imagine playing sport for five days and sometimes still no one wins? The Americans, the Americans really struggle with that. You know, they're like, what? <laughs> you know, because it's ingrained in American culture that there always has to be a winner. Very strong. But um, have a look. This is actually really quite interesting. This is three of our students who graduated last year. Uh, so these are the three students. Graduated last year, and they're now working for 20, uh, the 2019 Cricket World Cup. They've got jobs. So one, and this, this is why interesting thinking about the different jobs. One is working on security. And it's quite interesting, his stories are that. Right? He got into security, and you think security is absolutely vital. So it goes from acts of terrorism to people drinking too much alcohol, to all sorts of problems. So security is incredibly important at events now. Uh, but his background was that his dad runs a security firm uh, and trains, uh, we call them bouncers. Uh, what, I don't know if you'd have the word. If you go to a nightclub, do you have people on the doors? Standing like that? Can't come in, wearing trainers. No, no, you can come in, but you've got to take the hat off. We call them bouncers. What do you, what do you call them? See, we're security guards, so on the doors. So, so he kind of would do some of that work, but because he had that training and organisation, with his sport management degree, uh, and he sort of gained this experience, he's, kind of, he's got work on security, event security. And there's, uh, uh, there's about 12 different venues around Britain being used for it. And he's organising uh, a lot of that. Obviously, a big, big area is terrorism. That is a real big one. So he's working with, with government agencies. How many of you would think that, oh, I'm working for sports, I've got to work with the government and the Secret Service? Certain areas, certain areas, you have to, because we know that sports events can be target, uh, a target of terrorists. A terrorist, a terrorist mantra is, kill one, scare thousands. Right. And what better place to do it than a sports event? We've seen it in France, we've seen it around the world, sadly. But this is the world, this is the world that you are working in. This is the world that you have to manage. Um, this student, she was really interesting as well, where uh, she hates cricket. She hasn't got any interest in cricket. But think, the, the, roles, the role she's got is managing volunteers. Volunteers, absolutely vital. I asked this question earlier. Uh, I, for the 2012 Olympics in London, uh, I'll, I'll ask, we, we ask this, but no, no, no giving them the answer. How many volunteers do you think London needed for the Olympics. So, do you want to give me a figure? A guess. How many volunteers did the London Olympics need? I don't understand. You don't understand? No. Uh, anyone else? How, how many volunteers did the London Olympics need? 10,000. 10, 80,000. 80, oh, okay. <coughs> That's, it was 70,000. So, well done for you. So. Smarter, see? Definitely. Yeah, after your job. <laughs> <laughs> 70,000 volunteers. 70,000 people who are not being paid. 70,000 people who need to be clothed. 70,000 people who need to be interviewed. 70,000 people who need to have security checks done on them. So there is, a, there is someone paid to do all of that training, that recruitment. Um, the, um, the student, that's, that's her job, working with volunteers. And she got that because she volunteered, uh, did some volunteering work for a supermarket. 
a supermarket, a shop, Morrison's, it's like, I don't know what your big brand of, in, it's Tesco's and Morrison's and Sainsbury's and Marks and Spencer's, those are big brands, but one of the big brands, one of the big supermarkets, it's a bit like 7-Eleven, I suppose, 7-Eleven, that brand, uh, they give a lot of money to charity to work on the communities. It might be to clean up a pond or a stream, uh, help elderly people. So she did that, and she thought, nothing to do with events, but well, I'll do that to gain experience. Interviewer, and they say, you've got experience with the community. Yes, I've done this, this, and this. You're just the sort of person we want, because we want you to go out into the communities. So it's like someone saying, we want you to go out here, people who live all around here, to get them in to volunteer to help with this event. And that's her job. Doesn't like cricket, but on her CV now, she said, uh, I, I was uh, an events volunteer manager and recruiter for the Cricket World Cup, three years. She'll get a job on another event somewhere around the world. She could go to Japan and work on the Rugby World Cup. Doesn't matter whether she, whether she likes the sport, but she's got experience. Um, student experience, uh, Coventry's a, it's my first time to Seoul, and it's big. <laughs> it takes a long time to sort of get from the airport, I was surprised. Um, Coventry's quite small, it's compact. But that's good from a student point of view, because it means that you can walk everywhere, uh, and there's lots of student facilities, so it's quite a compact city, lots of students. So it's very much it's geared uh, for students. Um, so it comes, uh, you, you will do all of this, you will look at this, and you see Coventry comes quite highly. Um, what I'll draw your attention to is Coventry City of Sports at the moment. We've got the Godiva Festival, which is a music festival in Coventry, the largest free festival. We've got the Commonwealth Games coming up. So by the time you are sort of, um, you know, if you're coming to Coventry, 2022, some good, good timing. Volunteer. Volunteer. Put yourself there. Doesn't matter whether you're interested in, doesn't matter whether you're interested in all the Commonwealth sports. What an opportunity. I have worked on the Commonwealth Games. I did this, this, and this. You know, and... It's incredibly fun, it's exciting being part of an event. And we've also, Coventry, Coventry is also 2021 City of Culture. So that will be going on for quite a few months, and that's where you'll see all sorts of strange art projects. And that's why I'll tell sports students, get involved. Get involved. Push beyond your boundaries. So events, students, you can volunteer, so there's a event over there. You could volunteer for the Commonwealth Games, no problems. And sports students could volunteer to help out here. Work experience. It's all on your uh, CV. Okay, so I've been going on for a long while. I do apologise. <laughs> I could say a lot more. Um, but why choose us for sports and events? Now, so first and foremost, we always want students who are happy with the course and are happy with the university. And that's why, you know, ask as many questions as you want. Because we do appreciate it's such a big investment. But we've certainly got the experience. The business school, which is part of, has been going for over 50 years. And in terms of experience for sport, leisure and events, we've got over 25 years. Uh, the degrees aren't that old, but we started the leisure courses quite a few years ago. So that's why we have such good links. That's why so many, during guest lecture speech, so many of our alumni, so many of our ex-students come back to talk to students. And in five, six years' time, that could be you. You'll be getting a phone call from me saying, oh, hi, do you want to come back for guest lecture week? <laughs> yeah, I'll come back. And you are standing here talking to people like you during guest lecture week. And it is so nice to see that. It really is. It's, it's one of the most gratifying things 
when people, ex-students come back saying, oh, I remember what it was like when they were sitting in your place. So we've got bespoke uh, sport and business management modules, course design for employability. We do very much have a global outlook. So in terms of the case studies, in terms of trying to get you to look outwards. For yourselves, you're already thinking globally. You're already ahead of the game. If you do come to study you know, over, um, in another country, what I will say is that in terms of your personal skills, you're already demonstrating some very commendable skills in terms of courage to do it. It's, it's, no easy, you know, it's not an easy thing. So you have to actually think, say, you know what, I'm being quite brave, I'm being quite determined, and I'm demonstrating my motivation to not study here, but to go elsewhere. So you think about that when you're applying for jobs. You think about the skills that you are already demonstrating to us by being global, by studying elsewhere. So that's what we think. So we're also in a dynamic, growing and diverse uh, sector. And one of the things to think about is the final point here is transferable business and academic skills. Um, it's a business degree for a sports event. So do pre do, I do feel sorry that you're sitting there very patiently and it's sports science. But a lot of these points about sports science and employability do relate uh, uh, to it. But it's a business degree. So when you're applying for jobs, if you don't want to go sport related, some students do. They just say, I've got a business degree. I understand about money, because there's going to be some financial modules. I understand about people, and I understand about marketing. And you use that. You use that uh, uh, accordingly. Um, I will finish off with a um, bit of advice from some of the uh, Korean students. So I thought, well, perhaps it's worthwhile um, just to reflect on some of the things that they say. And I said, so what advice would you give for Korean students who are studying sport management at Coventry? Um, I, I quite like that. Try to experience as much as you can beyond the assignment. Lots of opportunities outside of the classroom. Um, you want to make a personal portfolio. So that's just showing how interesting you are. That is about saying that I didn't spend three years in my room playing Xbox. <laughs> I, I, I went out there and I tried to. I went out there and engaged with the world. I went out there and engaged with people. So I thought that was quite uh, telling. And the great thing about going to university is that it creates opportunities, creates networks. But it's networks and opportunities that you have to take. We are not going to come around going, there you go. <laughs> These are the opportunities. You have to take those. Um, it's quite interesting, sort of, um, another one sort of about marketing management. Now, the majority of Korean universities are not running uh, sport management, management courses. They are there, but it, it's one of the influencing factors. So you know, just, they're just trying to encourage you to do your research, be confident, be happy that you are choosing the right course. Um, and the students said to do more reading before they came, uh, relevant books and articles. Um, it's a mistake I made catching up now. Uh, so that's one of the things. Do the reading. Um, that, that's actually um, one of the books which I wrote, Sport Management. It's a very thin book. It's a basic book. But um, we've designed it almost as a pre-reader. So if you are interested in sport management, then it's one of the things. I'll finish off with Gary Player's line. The more I practice, the luckier I get. And I think that kind of encapsulates what you should be doing, whereas you have to invest. You have to put in the time to uh, succeed. Okay? And that's why I'll finish. Thank you. <laughs> so who was the writer of this book? Uh, that's me? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob, as well. Yeah.
<laughs> but we, we did uh, we did design it as uh, we did write it as uh, a pre we we call it a pre-course reader. So if you're interested in sport or event management, actually, because it gives an overview of all the key principles that you can refer to, and it's actually got questions in there like are e-sports a sport and things like that. So can yeah. I be off my lead? Yeah, this is me. Um, no, then. <laughs> Just like a dog, you know, a dog off the lead. <laughs> any, any, any questions? I, I, if you want, I can do it on a more informal basis, so if you want to come up. So I appreciate that it can be sort of a little bit awkward. So, how <laughs> Let's 일단 어, 이, 뭐, 너무 많은 말씀을 해주셔서 다 이해하지 못하셨을 수도 있겠지만 우리 교수님 PPT 발표한 거에 대해서 궁금한 점이 있다. 한글로 말씀하시면 제가 먼저 제가 제가 대신 물어볼게요. 그 학교가 그 취업 이제 이론을 가르치는 건지 약간 좀 실무 쪽을 가르치는 건지 궁금해요. 여기는 굉장히 실무예요. 그래서 아까 말한 것 중에 learning by doing이라고 그랬잖아요. 그래서 뭐 필드 트립도 그러니까 계속 말하는 게 프랙티컬한 교육을 한다고 얘기를 하거든요. 그래서 그러니까 지금 스포츠 매니지먼트 한다라고 하면 러퍼러랑 코멘트리를 가장 많이 보시는데 그 차이가 굉장히 크게 것 같아요. 그래서 나중에 저희가 이 세미나 가서 다른 세미나에서도 얘기를 항상 비교를 하는데 스포츠 매니지먼트, 스포츠 마케팅 비교를 할때타 러퍼러를 가고 싶다고 타 코멘트리를 가고 싶다고 하는데 딱두 대학의 모듈, 그러니까 커리큘럼을 딱 보시면 이쪽은 굉장히 프랙트. 실질적인 거. 석사 과정에서도 그 인턴이나 실습 그런 기회가 있는 건가요? 아, 커뮤니티 러퍼는 모르겠어요. 사실 그건 너무 많아요. 저희 학생 봤을 때 진짜 굉장히 이론적으로 공부했던 걸 기억해요. 그리고 커뮤니티 같은 경우에는 석사도 1월에 1월 5일, 1월 12일에 세미나 했을 때 확인했던 건데 논문 없이 프로젝트로 확인을 주는 걸로 바뀐다고 하더라고요. 어떻게든 특히나 스포츠 매니지먼트나 스포츠 마케팅 쪽은 실무가 중요하고 경험이 있고 인턴스 경험이 있어야지 나중에 취업이 잘 되기 때문에 그런 쪽으로 학과 석사가 다 움직이고 있어요. 아, 코멘트리요? 네. 아, 네. 그리고 아까 말씀하신 것처럼 아까 밑에 막 이렇게 슬라이드에 뭐 나왔잖아요. 그러니까 2021년에 이제 코멘트리가 어, 시티컬처? 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 이게 이제 한... But how long does City of Culture stay? It actually lasts about six months, approximately, isn't it? Six months. Mm. Is but, you, but you earn it three years before yeah. you are it, so it's three years for builder and it, then the year for the. So, three years, one time, one time, the city, 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 그거를 다 이제 코멘트리 그 학생들이 가서 하는 거고 2022년도에는 이게 커뮤니티 레스 게임이라고 연영방끼리 옛날에 영국 국가였던 연영방끼리 월드컵 같은 것들을 하고 있는 거죠. 그게 이제 코멘트리에서 하니까 어, 지금쯤 이제 코멘트리로 대학을 갔다. 그 파운데이션에서 모든 석사를 갔을 때 2021년, 2022년을 겪었다라고 하면 관련 쪽으로 취업할 때는 매우 유리할 수 있죠. 그 아까 사례로 그 버밍엄 그 학생이 코멘트리에서 지원해서 본 건지 아니면 자기가 이제 그 배우고 자기가 자의적으로 한 건지 그잘못 알아들어가지고 음, 아마 인턴십 과정 이제 어, 저희 유튜브에 보면은 유리 학생이라고 그 런던에서 인턴십 하는 학생이 있어요. 제가 나중에 이제 그 이메일 보내드릴게요. 그걸 보면은 어떻게 그러니까 원래는 영국 학사가 3년인데 보증은 네. 4년으로 해요. 그래서 1년 2년 공부하고 3년 때 이제 플래스 그러니까 인턴십을 하고 3학년을 하고 졸업을 하거든요. 그래서 다이 인턴십을 하려고 되게 많이 노력을 해요. 이거를 할때 어떻게 하면 되느냐 그럼 저희 유튜브 비디오를 꼭 참고해 주시기 바랍니다. 
갖고 말씀하신 것처럼 학교에서 알아서 이제 문 줄이고 가서 야너 이거 있어 너 이거 해 이렇게 하는 게 아니라 1학년 2학년 준비를 잘 해야 돼요. 그리고 2학년 들어가서 인턴십 자리를 찾고 인턴십이 되면 이제 3년 차에 3학년이 아니라 3년 차에 관련된 뭐 혹은 뭐 어떤 기업체에서든 일을 하고 그다음에 4년 4년 차에 돌아와서 3학년으로 마치게 끝내요. 그리고 제가 알기로는 여기 스포츠 매니지먼트 전공에서는 인턴십 때 토트넘에서 3년 뽑아가 부족한 토트넘도 있고 어디도 있고 어디도 있고 다 리스트가 있습니다. 그래서 뽑아야 돼요. 성적이 좋아야 돼요. 공부 잘해야 돼요. 이장이 있는 것 같아요. 아, 광고할 말 같구나. 네. 그러면 어, 저, 제가 저랑 저희 오늘 실장님 계신데 어, 여기 있을 테니까 궁금하신 것들 좀 저희한테 자유롭게 물어보시면 좋을 것 같고요. 어, 아직 저희 뭐 분위기가 이렇게 뭐 따뜻하고 그런 건좀 저희 좀 안좋아하니까 그냥 편안하게 물어보시면 되고 어, 뭐 스포츠 사이언스 어, 석사 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 하시는 분 있다고 하셨죠? 제가 석사? 네. 학사랑 석사는 완전히 달라요 그러니까 입학하는 방법이 그리고 학사 같은 경우에는 우리나라에서 분명한 학원이 들어가셨으면 다 파운데이션을 해야 되실 거고 왜냐면 코벤트리 대학은 초, 중, 고 13년을 해야지만 입학할 수 있어요 우리는 초, 중, 고가 12년이거든요. 1년 모자는 입학을 못합니다. 그래서 파운데이션이라고 하는 대학 입학 예비 과정을 하고 들어가야 되는 거고 석사는 그냥 들어갈 수도 있어요. 그리고 뭐 전공이나 이런 데 문제가 있고 학점이 낮다, 뭐, 뭐 내가 관련 전공을 안 했다라고 하면 이제 프리마스터 같은 과정을 하면 또 들어갈 수도 있고 그때 그 전화했을 때 전공이랑 IELTS 필요하다고 했는데 네. IELTS 6.5랑 이제 또 어떤 거 필요한 건지 석사로 다이렉트 입학을 할 때는 요건이 학사 성적 그리고 이력서, 그다음에 SOB, 그러니까 에세이, 자기소개서, 추천서가 두 부가 들어갑니다. 두 부. 그리고 영어 성적. 기본적으로 여섯 개예요. 그래서 이걸 맞춰서 들어가게 되는데 이제 그걸 이제 학점이 어떻게 되시는지 어떤 전공을 하셨는지를 보고 저희가 개별적으로 좀 말씀드릴게요. 왜냐하면 사람마다 다 다르니까. 내가 공부한 걸 어떻게 공부했냐 이런 것도 다르긴 합니다. 그럼 그럼 좀 자유롭게 이거 다 내리고 우리 집을 끄고 하겠습니다. 아무튼 그럼 이걸로 저희 오늘 준비한 세미나를 마치도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.